Hello, this video is a small portion of a complete comprehensive video. If you'd like to see this complete comprehensive case and many other complete comprehensive cases, click on the link in the description below. This is a complicated case. When you start this, you better be able to get to the end because you can't fade in the middle. You've got to get to the end so I know what result we can expect at the end of treatment. Painless and profound local anesthesia is so important. Sedation is a big deal too if you're doing these complicated cases. They want to be sedated, at least subdued, while the dental work's being done. So painless and profound local anesthesia, you must give intraligamental. They will not forgive you if they feel it when you're doing something of consequence. These are intraligamental. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw platelet-rich fibrin to place in the extraction sockets. I like to mix it with freeze-dried bone. In this case, I'm using demineralized cortical freeze-dried bone. Bioas is a good one, Maxius is a good one, and I mix it with the platelet-rich fibrin. And I use the serum of the platelet-rich fibrin as the wetting agent. The reason I like to mix the platelet-rich fibrin with the freeze-dried bone is because it becomes more like sand. It's got some body. If I'm trying to just pack the freeze, uh, the platelet-rich fibrin in the socket. It's kind of like working with jello, and it's hard to get a stable fill. So I like to use platelet-rich fibrin mixed with freeze-dried bone, and then I put a collagen membrane across the filled socket, and that gives me a flat surface when everything heals. Finding a vein, just placing the, the uh, needle in the vein. So it's not it's not without being, it is technique sensitive. You must be able to find a vein. I'm going to be extracting the lateral incisors and prepping the central incisors and the cuspids, and then I'm going to graft the sockets of the extracted lateral incisors with platelet rich fibrin mixed with freeze dried bone, and I use the serum of the platelet rich fibrin as the wetting agent for the freeze dried bone. Okay, so this is the platelet-rich fibrin that's been spun down, and the yellow part is the platelet-rich fibrin. You put it on this perforated tray, cut the blood part off, and here they are. They look like little caterpillars, and you put this solid tray on top of them and let it sit there for about 15, 20 minutes. And that squeezes the serum out of the platelet-rich fibrin pieces into a tray below the perforated tray. Okay, so I'm going to reanesthetize just to be sure everything is nice and numb. I'm doing the intraligamental injections for the teeth that are about to be extracted. You want to be sure they're numb as a post. There are few things in practice you can do, in my opinion, that are as important as the comprehensive exam and consultation and profound local anesthesia. If you if the patient feels pain, they're not going to like you. So you want it to be dead numb, and you must do an intraligamental. To give you this tip, you want the bevel pointed toward the tooth in the sulcus, and you put pressure on the, the holder part of the syringe for about 30 seconds with each tooth, and that will dead numb it, make it dead numb. Now, with the maxillary, you're going to first give an infiltration. With the mandible, you're going to first give a block, and the way you've been giving a block is not right. I'll tell you that. Watch the video on mandibular, uh, painless and profound mandibular uh, local anesthesia. So I'm prepping the teeth, so I'm going to have a retainer on the cuspid and the central incisor, and this central incisor and cuspid, and the bridge will go cuspid to central, cuspid to central. So first, I'm going to extract the lateral incisor. So if you can get a little movement before you extract it with this 301 elevator, that's a good thing. So I want, as Dr. Cosentino used to say when I was in that oral surgery fellowship, let the blood help you. Get the blood in the periodontal ligament space and it'll help you extract that tooth. It'll lubricate it. So a little blood, a little movement, will put blood in that periodontal ligament space and make it easier to extract. I'm just going to unscrew those teeth with this Hugh Freedy FX13. You just unscrew them. I don't want to come to the facial because that would 
damage the facial uh, bone. And I want to retain that for my uh, plate-rich fibrin and freeze-dried demineralized cortical bone. So there's the extracted teeth. Curette them out real well. Be sure there's not any granulation tissue in the sockets. Just reflecting a little flap so I can see only the edge. I'm not going to reflect a big flap. I want to see just the margin of the uh, alveolar, I want to see the alveolar crest. I want to be sure there's no loss of facial bone and I want to see where the alveolar crest is. What if I'd lost this facial bone? What if it wasn't present? Then I'd reflect the flap, place my platyrrhous fibrin and demineralized bone in the socket, then place a resorbable collagen membrane over the graft on the facial and the incisal. In this case, the, the facial bone is intact, so I don't have to do that. I'm only placing the graft in the socket. So this is the serum, and this is Maxius cortical uh, demineralized bone. So I'm going to mix that up, and then I'm going to cut the platelet-rich fibrin, which is now flattened out because the serum has been extruded from it with that tray on top of it, and cut it into smaller pieces. And this demineralized bone will give it some substance so you can pack it into the socket. I just find it hard to work with just plain platelet-rich fibrin because, like I said, it's like jello. Then this is a resorbable collagen membrane. This is a contour adapt. What I'm looking for in a membrane is I want one that's not like a starch shirt. I don't want it totally rigid. I want it to, when it gets wet, I want it to contour to whatever I'm placing it on top of. So this is, there's probably a million of them, but this is a good one. Now I'm cutting it to the right. I want, what I'm wanting this resorbable membrane to do is just tuck in under the flaps. That's why I reflected a little flap on the facial and a little flap on the palo. I don't want to reflect a big flap unless I'm having to graft uh, the entire facial because the facial bone, the buccal bone's been lost. If the alveolar crest is visible right below the gum, then I want to reflect just a little flap so I can tuck the mar edges of this absorbable membrane under the flap. I'm cutting the corners off, seeing it's just going to tuck right under here and do the same thing on the palatal. This is a, I'll either use a spoon or a small periodontal elevator. Then I'm using 3-0 gut suture. And when I'm placing these membranes, I like to suture across the membrane, make an X. Sometimes I'll put another one right across the middle, but I like to make an X just to hold it in place. Ideally, you'd like your knot to be over here on the tissue, not in the middle of the extraction site. See, it's over here on the side. So this is that one. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to cut that resorbable membrane where it's just a, it fits mesial distally, but it's a little longer facial palatally. So it can tuck, under, then I'm going to cut those corners off. It'll tuck just under that flap on the facial and the palatal. You, I don't think you want to try to do this kind of work in a high volume practice. I mean, this takes some time. It takes some thought. And I'll see a patient like this every morning from eight in the morning until 12 or one in the afternoon. And you're tired when you get to the end of this. So you don't want to be running in the other room to place a composite filling or seat a crown. You're done, you're ready to go home for lunch. So this is the, everything sutured. This is the grafted sockets. That's the Dental Minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Are you feeling stuck? You know you have more to offer and you can elevate higher in your dentistry practice, but you just don't know how to do it. Well, great news. 
DentistryMasterclasses.com is here for you. At DentistryMasterclasses.com, Dr. Carpeth is offering his greatest work and his best cases. Here's everything included when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. You will get incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos, an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, and the Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference. You will get before and after pictures of Dr. Cutper's fantastic restored cases. And guess what? All of this is 40 bucks a month. That's right, 40 bucks a month. This is an opportunity you cannot miss. Go to dentistrymasterclasses.com and subscribe today.